I got eight years for my first sentence. I just still thought I was untouchable. So when I come out, bro, I turned wild. We went really stupid, like really, really stupid. And what'd you get nicked for? Kidnapping, uh, conspiracy to blackmail with intent to use firearm again. I'm not proud of the, what the things that I've done. You know, looking back at it now, I cringe. It's just not the route to go down. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got Ibi Aslam. Ibi went from being in prison to turning over millions of pounds a year. Ibi, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you, bro. Yeah. Listen, I was probably quite shocked by the story you sent me. Mm. When you sent it over to me the other day, I read through it and the first reply was, oh shit, I can't wait for this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your story's mad. Mm. It is mad. And if we can jump straight into what life is like now. Yeah. And then we'll take it back a little bit. Most of the people like to go back to your childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the positives first. No one really does that. Everyone talks about yeah, the yeah. negatives and prison life and this. Talk to me, you're a successful man. Okay, bro. Well, firstly, look, I just want to say I value the opportunity and thank you for inviting me. Um, and you're doing great things and I love this studio <laughs> and just thank you. keep doing what you're doing. But yeah, look, bro, I'm a mindset and business gro growth coach at the moment um, where basically what I do is I work with people focus on personal development, yeah. make them a better person, and ultimately look at their business. We audit people's businesses and we show them how they can scale that. Sim in short, that's what I do. So basically you make businesses earn more money. Basically, yeah. yeah. That's what we do. And there is a criteria, of course, like I won't work with beginners or someone yeah. who's just starting off, but you know, you have to have some skin in the game and you have to have earned some money already. Like my, my minimum is like, they have to have made at least a hundred K a year already, or they're doing that already turnover. Yeah. And then I can show them how they can basically scale, scale that. Yeah. So pretty much in short for people that don't understand all the, the big words, mm. you turn businesses that make a hundred grand into millions of pounds. Easy. Yeah. 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 And one of the key things is personal development. Okay. It's part of that. And like, I always say you can't make a million dollars if you're not a million dollar person. That's true. It's right. True. A, lot so, of, a lot of people want to live the big life, yeah. but they're just, they're not cut out for it. They're not cut out for it. And, and some people are comfortable with a hundred grand. That's fine. Yeah. Some people are comfortable making a thousand pound a week. So it, it does ultimately come down to what your purpose is and what your mission is. And, you know, it's a deep conversation that I have. And then we we take it from there based on individual businesses and that sort of thing. No, we had a little, we had a brief conversation before we started. Yeah. And now already I can say that you know your shit. You're not you're not a waffler. Yeah. You do. You know your shit. First thing you asked me was tell me a little bit about yourself. You've done your research on me before you come here. You, you knew about me, and I respect that. But Ibi, you didn't get to where you got to from. You weren't lucky. You didn't win the lottery overnight. Mm. You went through some hardship in life. Yep. Now let's talk about that. Yeah, so... Where's where's this millionaire from? Okay, so look, br I mean, where do you want to go? Do you want to go... Back to childhood. Talk to me about your family, your yeah. upbringing. Yeah. Because I think that plays a massive part in everyone's life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so my childhood was really, really good in terms of, like, I was brought up in a really wealthy family, right? My dad was really rich. He was a property developer. Um, we really had everything that I wanted. Yeah. So I couldn't really complain. Like, my bringing, upbringing was not a council estate. You know what? You hear people's yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother, mine was the total opposite, right? Where we had everything. It was a very very strict upbringing in terms of like Islamically. He didn't even allow us to watch TV. Serious. Seriously, like no social media. I'm 35 now, so I didn't get my first phone till about 16. Oh, wow. But even, even then it was... Um, like we were restricted. We weren't allowed out like after nine o'clock. Like it was really, really strict, right? Um, where, where was you from, what area? From Manchester. Okay, Manchester. Yeah, yeah I'm born and raised in Manchester, um, born in Longsight and then we moved out to like a decent area, just outskirts. Like even from a young age, it was like, it was no Asian families in this in this area, bro. <laughs> like he just moved us there. Yeah. Like at that time, I didn't understand what was going on. But it was just the way, I don't know, he was protecting us or looking back at it now, like I understood what he was doing okay. from his knowledge and from his experience. I, I understand what he was doing. But um, but in the time, I didn't I didn't understand what he was doing. I was like, why is he so strict on us? What age did you move? So about eight, nine. Okay. So eight, nine. Just as you're getting into that age of starting to grow up, get a friendship circle, all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just we moved to Bromall. We went to school up there, and then from there we went. Uh, we used to go to mosque 
a routine was go in the wake up in the morning, go to school, finish at four, go mosque at five, come back at seven, eight, eat and bed. So a proper Muslim household. Proper. Okay. Like I'm talking strict. Like the only bad thing I remember, like even this was a little bit older then, I was probably doing is just smoking cigarettes and not even properly, just for the sake of it because yeah, yeah. my mates was and I thought that was cool and whatever, whatever. But that's all I was really doing. He he had everything like such strict like routined out where I couldn't, we couldn't even go somewhere. I just couldn't. Yeah. That was my upbringing. And bro, then we hit 10, around 10. And my dad decided he didn't want to be in UK no more. He said, I've, I, I don't, I don't want to be in this country no more. I want to move abroad. So he, his first option was he wanted to go Saudi Arabia. Yep. Right. He said, I made my money. I want to go there and retire and do what, and I want you to come with me. Mm -hmm. This is what he said to me. Right. But my mum and dad were not, well, a little bit like on not on, my mum didn't Rocky agree. Roads. Yeah, my mum and my mum didn't agree with that path. She said I'm not going Saudi Arabia because she was suffering from kidney dialysis, okay. and she said it's everything's very very private up there. So if I come with you, one day we have an argument and you don't pay for my injection or something, well, that could be the end of me type yeah. thing, right? Well, I respect her for saying that as well. Yeah, but we was f kind of we he kind of um, got us to come with him, my brothers and. My sister as well, I think, yeah. So we was there for like a year or two, bro. But I didn't like it up there, I'm going to be honest. Like, it just wasn't for Different me. World, the it? culture wasn't for me. It wasn't for me at the time. I was really young. So then after a few years, I came back. But when I came back this time, I fighted then. I didn't want to go back. I ran out from the house. I was just a rebellious kid then. You turned proper rebellious. Like, I remember the day he had booked our seats. I just, the night yeah. before I ran off <laughs> the leads in on a train. So, yeah, so that's why. At what age did you do all this? I think I was like tw 12, 13 well, here. You were running away. <laughs> Bro, I was getting off like 30. Oh, I just, like a madman at I 30. hated it. I just didn't want to go back up there. Yeah, no, I can imagine. And I thought my mum's here. And I thought, I'm, I'm staying here. I'm not going up there. So it was like, uh, yeah. So when that happened, remember my dad's, he's rich. He's yep. got power. He's, he's a property developer. He's, a, he's already a multimillionaire, whatever. So he's thinking, you cheeky little bastards, you're not listening to me. Yeah. So, all right, you know what I'll do? I'll pull the financial yeah, yeah, take that rug under you, yeah? Use a living like rich kids. So I'll show you what, what life is really about, right? Yeah. But remember, by this now, 12, 13, we've had everything. Mm -hmm. Like, no struggles, never had like... You've lived like kings. Yeah. So at 12, 13, he pulls the plug, moves us out of the house, puts us in, in another terraced house from like... Like I do a six, seven bedroom house to a terraced house. Said to my mom and all of us brothers, like, well, okay, if you're not gonna come with me and not support what I'm doing, then you just go up there. Live it up there, right? Just left us. <laughs> Bro, at 13, 14, <laughs> like I was the yeah. eldest. You're thinking, shit. <laughs> I'm thinking, right, okay, so I'm now beginning to understand a little bit what's going on. But remember, this is the problem, right? People in the area are thinking we're rich. Yeah. They're thinking these guys are millionaire kids. But we wasn't really that at that point because everything was took away. So it was just struggle after struggle after struggle. And bro, at, at that time, I just ended up in the wrong crowd because I looked at the kids on the street who was making money from drugs and that sort of thing. And I thought, you know what? That's where I want I want to be. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I can make money from here. Yeah. So then I started hanging around with them. At that point, we was just basically, I fell onto the streets, bro. I started looking on the streets and I thought, well, maybe that's where I need to be then. Um, and just start hustling and just start earning a bit of respect and start figuring out like how can I get a bit more value in what I'm doing and 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 that was that really and then I fell onto the streets started selling weed starting selling you know a bit of sniff and just got involved in on was that you way. living with your at your with your mom at this yeah, point? yeah 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 she know about anything happening at this point N not really I mean she knew I was going out yeah. she was always like ringing me like it's eight o'clock now why are you not home why are you not home and I just used to kind of ignore ignore the the call and say look I'll be home soon mom don't worry yeah. don't worry she never clue what I was doing um and yeah I fell into the then that's when I just started hanging out with ro wrong wrong people started selling drugs and firearms and just thought I was a gangster and just stupid dumb shit bro. So you went from living a millionaire life with your dad. Yeah. And I think it's probably come down from the fact because your dad pulled the plug on everything, you went from being the main man to having nothing. You wanted to have, be that main man again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously you went to selling drugs. Guns? You were selling guns, you said? No, I wasn't selling guns. We, we, 
we you know i need to be careful what i say here but bro we was we was we was involved in that circle and everything comes and everything's a commodity whatever you can get you sell right you sometimes you're a middleman for everything yeah, yeah but drugs and you know firearms and this is pretty normal in that world okay right so so yeah i had good contacts where i could get certain stuff and i sell make money on it that i was doing or everything whatever was involved in that in that in that um in that in that space and how did you get caught right so fast forward a few years so you're just involved in that life you dive deeper into obviously the yeah selling. yeah yeah so i meet more people in that vicinity like like just just kids who just like on the streets and i was always one of them bro where i've never been a loud speaker in terms of oh i'm shouting about some problem i've always been a silent killer okay. right so when i got involved in that circle i was just like come then what are we doing because if you're going to do something, let's do something at the best then, right? So if we're going to be on the street, if we're going to be like so-called boys on the street, then let's do that at our best. Yeah. Let's, if we're going to do weed, let's do the biggest weed. That, let's bring it in. Let's do yeah. it. So we, I started creating this sort of a circle with, with, along with other people and just started doing everything. And in that world, people owe you money, people, and, and that sort of thing. So we, what I done was I got involved with, it was drug dealers versus drug dealers. People owed us money, and it was like, right, I'm gonna collect that debt, mm -hmm. and just rang him up, said, listen, you owe fifty grand. Um, you've got seven days to pay it. If you don't pay, it's gonna be consequences. Simple. I had firearms, I had everything, and I thought. Initially, they didn't take my warning seriously. I was an eighteen year old kid. Um, then I thought, okay, what should I do? I don't want to injure no one, but what I'll do is I'll go and shoot the house up. A little warning, give them little a little warning. Pay, pay up now. Yeah, so they know that the guy's serious. So I shot up the whole house, like at four in the morning, and I rang him back the next day. I said, "Well, remember, I spoke to you a few days ago. Yeah. So this is just a little warning. Next time is going to be really, really serious, right? So take this as a final warning and tell me which day you're going to pay up. That's what I said." They said, I'm really, really sorry. I'm going to pay up. Give us a few days. a lot of money. We've got money in the bank, blah, blah, blah. They bought another seven days of me. But they this was now before I was going to get arrested for my first stuff, right? But they were now in touch with Scotland Yard and police. Oh, wow. And be like, vibe, this yeah? is what's happened. So the police is telling them what to say to me, right? But I didn't know this. I found out later on when I'm reading, going through my depths and blah, blah, blah. So they're saying, yeah, no problem. Give us another three, four days. Um, the money will be ready. I think it was Friday or something. And give us an address. So I gave them an address, but I planned this out to a T, bro. I thought, right, this is an address. It was an alleyway next to the address, yeah? Yeah. So I thought, if they come here, drop the bag off here, here's an alleyway. I can get someone to pick it up, run through this alleyway. I'll be on this side of the road. And if even if police comes, like, gives us enough room to get off. In my head, I was thinking, this is a good move. So I gave them a dress, planned the route out a little bit, bought myself some time. Half an hour, they agreed to everything. Half an hour before they were about to drop the money off, the guy messages me saying that, I'm really sorry, I can't come to that address, but can, I'm really, really scared. Can I leave it in a public space somewhere? Like in another address, which was five minutes from there. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, what's the address? Remember, I'm getting impatient, me now. You wanna I'm get your young, money? I want the money. Like, they pulled a clever move, but police asked them to do that. So they found a public space and they said they're going to leave it at a bus stop near some bins in a bag. So I'm now having to change my whole thing up. I'm thinking, right, so I, I, I hired a smackhead. I said, listen, I'll give you five grand. <laughs> Go and pick this up. And as soon as you pick it up, you're going to walk down this road and we're going to, you're going to meet me at, on this, at this house. And because I'm thinking if he picks it up and he walks 10 minutes, if he's going to get nabbed, he's going to get nabbed in that time. Yeah. Right. And if he makes it to the house, then we're he's cool. Good. We're safe. So he picks the bag up, the guy drops the money off, the guy who's bought, he dropped the money off, well, so-called money off in a bag. He's now already there. He's then on the phone to me saying the bag's been dropped. I'm like, okay, well, go and pick it up. So he's picked the bag up. I'm now watching from a different area because where it was, I could watch everything. Police was also surveillancing me, them, everyone. So feds were watching you. Everything. Yeah, they were, watch they were watching me from the night before, bro. Shit. Right. They knew everything, what was going on. Because they had cell sighted me. They knew. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, then he's picked the bag up. The plan was he was going to walk to the house. Me like a dickhead. Got impatient. 
Um, he walks for five minutes and I'm thinking, I don't really know this smackhead. He's a smackhead at the end of the day. He could take that money and just run with it. It's, it's, bro, it's a doggy dog's world in that mm -hmm. game. You can't trust no one. And for me, it was like a lot of money at that time. I didn't wait till he got to, I didn't wait for him to get to the house. I, I let him walk four minutes. I pulled up next to him and said, yo, listen, just jump in the car. We're sweet, we're fine. And he just jumped in the car. From there, we've gone to a local gym. I've parked up. Police are following, watching everything. I didn't, I'm thinking now there's no police, but they're watching me in surveillance cars. So he's like- Proper under, whole yeah, job Yeah, 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 proper. So I pulled up at the his village hotel in, in Manchester. I've pulled up there. I've, no, he's put the money in the boot before he jumped in the car. So I've then got out to open the bag to give him his five grand. Yeah. As I've opened the bag, um, what's happened is I've, I've I've took the bundle out. One bundle, I figured out, oh, five grand. I've oh, so there was money in the bag. What's going on, guys? This video is sponsored by London Steel Services Limited, based in Hertfordshire on the A10. No job too small, no job too big. Anything to do with metal, these are your guys. Make sure you hit up London Steel Services Limited. All their information is on the screen right now. They offer crazy lead times, 24 to 48 hours on builders, beams, and small fabrication jobs. Flatbed and 45 to 90 foot crane high ab deliveries. The jobs they get involved with are barn conversions, extensions, loft conversions, new builds. They can survey, design, supply and install steel, or simply just supply. Whatever you need, they're here to help. Yeah, there was money oh, in the yeah, bag, but there was, but money, there was yeah. fake money. Oh shit. Right? So I've jumped in the car, give him the five grand bundles. Now, he's he said to me Ibi, this is fake money like after quick i didn't even look at that he said this is i said what first he's giving me a hug like yes i've got five grand then he's said maybe this is fake money but i'm saying how is it fake money i'm processing this so i've got out the car to check the rest of the bag is it really fake as i'm bro as i'm processing that as i'm looking at the money whoo police pull up get on the fucking floor get on the floor uh I, as i'm processing it just had me bro there had him put me on the floor said you know you little bastard you're arrested so i'm like officer why are you arresting me for <laughs> like you know why we're arresting you but I, obviously it was no comment yeah. and it was the end of that i got arrested i got eight years for my first sentence um bro that was my first sentence and just to just quickly get to the sentences like i cut throughout that sentence then uh, my mum passed away and then obviously I just still thought I was untouchable. Like, um, and yeah. Uh, do you want me to continue then? Yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah. course. So, so but just one second, hold on. Yeah. So you come from a strict household. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mum and dad are obviously very well respected people, especially your dad. Yeah, yeah. When he gets a phone call saying, yo, your son Ibi has been nicked. Yeah, yeah. He must have got, cause in our culture. Yeah. Asian, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Pride is everything yeah 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 they don't give a shit about the money when it comes down to pride 100 percent, 100 percent. what in the world happened bro if i'm honest with you he didn't really say anything he, he went he went silent mode but that speaks volumes yeah. as well right so my brother was in contact with him and apparently he just once said well how's he ended up up there right but that alone meant like like do you like, think do you reckon your dad ever thought to himself not of course this is his fault. Not yeah, your dad's yeah, fault. Yeah. But do you think he ever turned around and thought, fuck, maybe if I stuck by their side, he wouldn't have gone down this I road. would have done that. Imagine my son done that. I would have been like, where did I go wrong? Yeah. But that's like that's a growth mindset to look at stuff from. If people don't have that growth mindset, I'm not saying he hasn't or he has, I don't know. But like, if I'm, if me and you have a little con sensible conversation, like nine seconds, we'll be like, well, where did I go wrong? Yeah. It was my son. Did I any fuck up any move? But I don't know if he did or not. That conversation has not been had. Because I think the old-fashioned parents, like my dad and stuff, yeah. and whatever we do wrong is our fault. Yeah. It's our yeah. fault. It doesn't, it's, yeah, they, same. They, they don't take responsibility. It's our fault. Yeah, it's, it's our, our fault. fault. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't yeah. matter what happens. It's our fault. That's it, bro. So he didn't really say anything. He went silent mode. And I just got sent in. Remember, I'm my first time. I'm 18 now. Yeah. We're put in jail along with people who are doing bigger crimes, bigger sentences. That's a big sentence for your first time as well. Yeah. So... As soon as it went in, people are sat. I'm like, what am I in for? I mean, I mean, how long am I gonna get? Everyone's starting. You're gonna get eight years, ten years from the first, second day, because everyone's like a solicitor in there. Everyone's yeah. a judge. Everyone's a barrister, telling you what's <laughs> happening. So I'm listening to the all this. I'm like, yeah, really. So I started learning from the very first day that I could be getting a long time inside. So I started conditioning myself. So by the time I did come to getting sentenced, you was already ready. I was kind of mentally ready, prepared for it. So when I got to the jail, when I got when I got to the thing, um, 
the judge that it, he sent me to eight years in prison and you know the only really um upsetting thing was because i had younger brothers and siblings and i was just like oh, you know but i was thinking when am i going to come out when i'm going to be 24 then i'm like all right okay 24 so it is what it is let's just get on with it yeah. and that was that then and you said your mom passed away during this sentence so bro throughout that jail sentence um i done my time then in my last year my mom passed away so when my mom passed away i think it was just bef a year before i was about to come out and it just kind of i fell off the edge a little bit i just was lost mm -hmm. and as i came out bro jail does two things to you either it just rehabilitates you and you think fuck it time to fix up or it turns you even more wild yeah so when i come out after 24 just prior my mom's passed away i'm thinking wait a minute i don't know how to make money apart from drugs and this and that so I've been, f I've been spent eight years in prison. All right, I've earned some stripes now. I've got some respect in the game on the streets. So you know what? Let's just go down that path and become an even bigger dick, a bigger ro road man yeah, type yeah, thing. That. And that's the route I went down. So literally I come out and I got a circle together and we were just intimidating again, drug dealers and this and that. And people were coming to us now because we've come out of pen. Yo, he owes me money. He owes me money. He owes me money. So I'm like, all right then. So now we've got... And now you're even hungrier than ever. Yeah, well. hungrier. We're in a different mindset. You know, people are probably a bit afraid as well. These have come out of prison. They're a bit crazy. And I'm guessing you didn't find prison hard? Bro, uh, if I'm honest, no, not really. Because that's what makes someone even more scary. When yeah. they come out of prison and they think, fuck it, I'm not scared to go back. Yeah, no, it that's didn't. That's when someone becomes a bit dangerous. Yeah, I didn't really find it. I, I I was always good at looking at every situation and thinking, what can I do? What can How can I make it this sense, uh, sentence easy for me? Yeah. And I figured out that if I got a job in the gym orderly, as a gym job. Everyone who's gone prison, I swear to God, yeah. Yeah. I must have had 30 guests in prison. And everyone's been in the gym. In the gym. Yeah, bro. Everyone. Bro, you know why? Because you get gym. <laughs> And it used to be, you know, the server on the on the on the on the wing, on the yard, on the ward where you live, type thing. The the wing, there's like servery where they serve food. Yeah, yeah. That's a good job as well because they, you've got access to food. Yeah. It's a commodity, right? Then if you're a cleaner on the wing, that's a good job because you always get to stay out. And the, I thought I don't want to be on the wing because I don't want to see the same faces. I don't want to be on the canteen. Fuck food, yeah. right? I thought I want to go out. I want to go gym. I think that that was my route. Because I didn't take no drugs or spice or all that bullshit what everyone takes. So it was like, go to the gym, get your head right. Let's just do something in the gym. So for me, it was there. That's where I wanted to be. And that's what I'd done. So I made my jail like as easy as possible. And then, you know, we had, you know, everything else as well. And uh, it, it was just easy. So when I come out, bro, I turned wild. I lasted three months. Because well, I got You must nicked. have gone mad. Yeah, we went really stupid. Like really, really stupid. And what did you get nicked for? Same thing, but kidnapping, uh, conspiracy to blackmail with intent to use firearm again. This time, the obviously remember I was on license, so when I went, when I got remanded, the judge remanded because it, it was five of us now. All five got nicked, so all five of us. Are, How did you get nicked? Um, we we kidnapped the guy. Yeah. We took him to his house. We said get the money out. Um, his his family found out that these guys, my, my, our sons have been missing for two, three hours now. What's, what's happening? Um, they rang the police. I'm, me and my Cody are at his house saying that, bring the money down or are you going to go in? To or am I, we're figuring out who's going to go in with him to either get the money or shall we let him go? That That's too risky. Mm -hmm. As we're figuring this out, police pull up at the front. We let go of him. Bro, I've, I've never jumped over a bigger fence. I ran through the backyard, me and my Cody. We got on top of this fence. I don't know how I climbed this fence, Mikey. It was so big. <laughs> I fell on the other side. I ran. But because it was my area, I literally was like three, two or three in the morning. I went to someone's house, knocked on the door. I said, yo, let me in, let me in. Let me in, let me in. And as I got to the house, the helicopters were out. But I was just in by this point. So I was there. I was just like, got my breath back. Like figuring, oh shit, what's happened? I stayed there till seven in the morning, got a taxi to an another apartment. And from there, I was just, for 24 hours, I was indoors. We're figuring out, because it was on the news and this and that. And then, um, they, my, but my car, the car that we took to, that, to, that kidnap we him. to kidnap him, that was obviously left there. So police traced that car to me, a fucking dumb, like had a higher had a, had a car. And, 
that was one thing they found out it was me straight away because I had things in the car. So it was, you know. Because of your previous as and well. And then I was on uh, Wanted and then one day I was going to the gym. How long was you on the run for? Like two weeks. Uh. Yeah, two <laughs> weeks. So I went to the gym, bro. I pulled up at the gym. I got out the car. They pulled up behind me, blocked me. That's it. And just arrested me there and then. I went inside. Pissed. Yeah. But this time, like I said, when I went back inside, this time, uh, I was on license in it from a previous sentence. So the judge threw the book at me this time. He gave me he gave me nine and a half years. He didn't let the two years I'd done on remand. He said, nah, done a start, years on start, remand. let's start again. So combine the two sentences like I've done like just around 10, just a little bit over. Fucking But hell. it was in that jail sentence the second time. My younger brother died as well. So I think oh, wow. it was a certain point that I was just thought, you know what, it'd be fucking fix up, man. What are you doing? You're going to come out when you're 29. So I just changed my game then. Wow, what did your brother pass away from? Bro, he died in a car accident. He was 21. They, they went out for a wedding. Just friends hire a car. Yep. And they were sat in the back. They give somebody else to drive the car. And he, it was, it was, they were smoking weed. They got, had a chase from the police. Um, they just lost control. It was over three guys as well. They were three, all three mates. All of them died on the spot. Sorry to hear it that, It was man. horrible, yeah. And look, you have changed your life around. Yeah, you totally, bro. You're not in that. And by the way, I just want to say, like, I'm not proud of the, the things that I've done. You know, looking back at it now, I cringe. But I think it's important that we share these stories because there's people out there. And even for you to give this platform for people to come and talk, I just think it's important that there's people out there in that same position who think they're gangsters, who think they were... It's just not the route to go down. But you know as well, on that, I hear that. I understand that. I yeah. agree with you 100%. But I also think that major things need to happen in people's lives definitely for them to change yeah yeah because if you didn't go down that route yeah you might be working a nine to five in just a normal job or you might still be shot in food you might still definitely. be involved in that world you might be i'm not saying i agree with the kidnap i'm not saying i agree with the drug dealing. i don't agree with none of that yeah yeah but that ha is what has turned you into the person today definitely and as much as it's stupid the sales of drug dealing the sale of that's giving you the hunger yeah you've obviously implemented them sales tactics into what you do now standard yeah they, everyone they, yeah, they yeah. say the wealthiest men are, are like hustlers yes and and this is why it's even more important that you know someone like me we do coaching we help the youngsters and someone like you who's giving the platform and you have plenty of knowledge you're a very smart guy that we offer this platform to younger people where we say listen we'll be your mentors come and learn from us we're smashing it doing the right thing yeah this is where it's a big, big opportunity for, especially with platforms like this and your platform and my. We, this is why we should go down them routes. No, I agree with that, and I think as well with the current, the people who watch my things. Yeah, a lot of them want to be gangsters, believe it or not. Yeah, people think it's it's fashion with all this grime music. Yeah, everyone's talking about shooting, stabbing, selling drugs. Yeah, your situation, you're relatable. Yeah. People now can come to you and say, you've done that shit, man. How can I turn my life around? Yeah, yeah, How yeah. How can yeah. I turn my business and making? Because to make 100 grand a year ain't hard. No. But to make millions of pounds a year, yeah. that's where you come in. Yes, You're like, yes. okay, cool. Let me show you how you can do it. Yep, yep. Which, let's touch on that. Go on. How did you go on. from being this bad man, so-called bad man to, yeah, yeah. look, you sit opposite me today, a very respectful, probably one of the most respectful guests I've had on here. You bought me presents. Thank I you. like that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's all about health, right? I agree. I agree. Yeah. But I bought him a personal development pack. You know, I I'll get it. I'll show him after. I'll show him <laughs> after. But how have you cha changed your life? This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help okay bro so bro when i came out i was 29 right remember most men spend their 20s probably a bit lost mm -hmm. i spent my second half of my 20s after my second sentence really like focused and stressed in terms of what am i doing when i come out like intently every day right so I'm thinking, I'm coming out to an end. I hate my current position. What am I going to do? This is what my thought process. Mm -hmm. So when I've come out, bro, I hated my position so much that I just went 
boom, I moved out of my area. Straight away moved out of my area. I got another apartment somewhere else. All the friends that I had, cut them out of my life. Straight away. I don't want to talk to you, right? And I started just going on YouTube and started, towards the end of my journey, I started reading personal development books. So my mindset was in a different space. So as I was coming out, I was speaking to people and I thought, these guys are so backward. Their mindset's in for, in somewhere else. <laughs> and I couldn't relate the conversations that I was having with them. And I thought, wow, you know what? I, I've, I'm already one step ahead of these guys. And all these guys out here are doing is they're working five days and they're spending two days on the weekend going out and then going back to where they was at the start of the week. And if I can just focus for the next year and two, I will be way ahead of them, right? And I thought, and that's what it takes. You have to hate your current position, like hate it with guts. And that's what I did. And I thought, right, the first thing I need to do is I really need to um, invest in a mentor. I figured that out. That it's no way I'm getting to the next level. If I, I need to speak with people. Yeah. And I remember getting in touch with people and I, I said, I want to learn from you. And one person, I'll charge you a thousand pound an hour. In my mind, I'm thinking, all right, is this what it takes? Yeah, like in, I'm talking to myself. So I'm thinking, well, they are the best in the game. So I want to learn from this was then. And I, and I always started realizing, remember, because everything does come back to your childhood, yeah? So because like I was born in a wealthy family, we never had issue at home. My dad was like, bro, when I was traveling holidays at four years old, five years old, six years old, we were traveling first class then. Uh -huh. So I suppose it does come down, down to a bit of your programming. So I always wanted to attach myself to the best, yeah. be the best. And I thought, well, let's look at coaches now. Let's, let's actually study this. And I thought the best charge a thousand pound or ten thousand pound an hour. The, sh the the small ones. Ten thousand pound an yeah, hour. Yeah, bro. I, I, like one of my coaches charged forty thousand pound an hour. Raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, but it's a criteria. Your company has to be doing at least a million or or you know for Fuck you to afford me. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is normal in in that space. If you're if you're playing with the big boys and if you're if you're the best, you can't be the cheapest. Yeah. And if you're the cheapest, you're not people the are not going to expect you to be the best. Fuck me, I never thought of it. Right? Like fat 40 grand an hour. Bro, imagine you've got a heart problem right now. Yeah. Are you going to go on Google and chat? I want to find the cheapest heart no. su surgeon. What are you going to find? Best. You're going to point out who's the most best. And if it comes at a price tag. So you have to decide what sort of business model you want. Yeah, that's true, man. It's true. It's right? True. You have to decide. If, if you come up with an idea and someone in your circle, for example, is not encouraging that or not giving you that little push that you need, well, you need to remove them from your circle. Simple. That's what I done. So when I was speaking to certain people about social media and this and that, and they were like, no, done. I'm not speaking to you no more. I'm speaking to other people think, it'd be you're worth more than that. You just spent 10 years in prison. That's an experience on its own. Mm -hmm. You can literally do life coaching for certain people and charge 10 grand just for that. Then you've got seven years business experience. Like you're, I'm telling you, you're an elite coach. Like people, we all have limited beliefs, beliefs Mikey. You yep. know, it, we need, this is why we need mentors to show us who we, what is our real potential, right? Like right now, you and I, we are maxing out our ability. We yeah. are. Till you become more than what you are, then you'll be able to do more than you're doing. Then you'll be able to have more than you have. That makes sense. Listen, so you get it? You know, But you know when you found your first spent the initial thousand pound? Yeah. Was there a part of you that thought, oh, this is a waste of money? No. Uh, well, I thought that I was shocked first. thousand pound an hour? It's Charging me a thousand pound an hour? It's big money. I was thinking, really? You, you better teach me something damn good on this call. I got on the call. I realized that it wasn't even a call that I needed. Some of the things were like way ahead of me. Language I didn't understand. Like I, I would have needed that two years into my yeah. game. But I still picked up a lot of things. They give me some routes I need to go down. Then, bro, I hired another coach, um, another business mentor. And then I thought, well, this is not, I don't understand what's going on. Because, by the way, when I first come out of prison, I opened my first business. I opened a restaurant business. Yeah. So in order to open that, I needed half a million quid. I went to one of my dad's friends. This is where he come handy. I raised it. I said, uncle, I need half a million quid. Give me two years. I'll pay you back plus 10%. He trusted me, he knew my family, everything. And I was like genuinely serious. I said, look, I need half a million quid. Give me half, I've been spent 10 years in prison. And I'll give you 10% back. He gave me the money, bro. I opened my first business. I made money from that restaurant. I invested into property. 
as I was doing that, I realized I don't really want to be in the restaurant game, even though I'm making money from it. It's not my passion. It's not my purpose. Yeah. Early starts, late finishes, like 1 a.m., getting messages in the morning. This has happened with the gas pipe. This is broken down. That's <laughs> happened. I'm thinking, staff's not turning in. Driver's not. I'm thinking, this is fucking stress. But it taught me so much. And I thought, well, okay, now you understand leadership. You understand communication. You understand staff problems. You understand finances. You understand marketing. Because as you know, with a business owner, we wear all hats at yeah, the start. Everything. Right? So we have a lot of experience. This is where you have a lot of experience, bro. And um, and that was that. And I went to see another coach. I invested 10 grand in my first coach. And he taught me what money is. He said, "How? what is money, Ibi? So he broke down the basic fundamentals of financial literacy. He said, if you want to create money, you have to understand. Let's look at history. He taught me everything. He said, we're living in a new era now. It's the communication era. You really have to know how to message your message, how to communicate your message to the audience very, very clearly. You have to be good at what you do. Like Andrew Tate. Look at Andrew yeah, Tate. Smashed. He's really good at right? You have to practice this sort of stuff, you know, in order to be good on camera, in order to get your message clear. He said, if you do that, master it, pick a skill, learn more skills, combine with your experience, you can be the best in the game. But guess what else you need? You need personal development. Like if you really want to be a good coach, you have to be a really, really, really good listener. You have to have really, really good empathy. You have to make people feel like you've You've thought about their problems more than they have. Because I suppose every single one of your clients have a different problem. Yes. So it's not like a one all, one fits all. No, right? Like we've had relationships, you've had relationships. We can probably talk, do a coaching session on that. A hundred percent, 200%. Yeah. yeah so, so, so what I'm saying is it's what niche you want to pick. You have to pick one. It's, it's the most difficult part sometimes because I say that if your message is for everyone, your message is for no one. Mm -hmm. Right, and because we're entrepreneurs, we're like thinking like a thousand. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do. You have to get really patient, get really focused. Jeff Bezos focused on Amazon. Um, Elon Musk yeah. focused on one thing first. Bill Gates focused on one thing first. The problem with most entrepreneurs as well is we want to do everything. Yeah, we can't. we want all our hands in every single pie. We want to. Yeah. If one thing's making money, yet onto the next. All right, what now? Now, how do I make money here? Yeah, it it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. And I, and I teach people this in my programs that the first thing you must do is focus. Like if I'm looking at that orange juice there, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm focusing on that, right? If you say to me, Ibi, look up there. If I'm looking up there, my focus is gone from there. So that means if you then someone tells me, look up there, I'm looking, my focus is now gone everywhere. So if your focus is not on, in one place, like you have no, you can't, you can't, you can't work like that. Yeah. You have to have focus. Bro, you have to cut people out. Like I don't take my first call till after 11 a.m. Serious. Serious. I don't take my first meeting till after a certain time. But why is that? Why do you do that? Why do you put because, yourself in that? Because I know what I'm like and I feel like in the morning I need a removal process. What that means is wake up in the morning, read my fajr, then have a little water, do little, read the Quran, read a book as well, then go to the gym. This is all my removal process, bro. I'm not waking up happy. I'm waking up pissed off. Mm -hmm. I've got shit to do. So I have to go through a removal process before like, I let anything in my brain. Because you know what the problem is? Like me, for example, I wake up in the morning. Yeah. First thing I do. Yeah. What's that? Oh, sweet, cool. See you later. Yeah, 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 yeah. First thing. First yeah. thing, no matter what. No, I'll check my phone. Don't get me wrong. But but what I'm saying is like, I won't let anything negative in. So I won't, no phone call. I won't check no text message. Like, I'll just check the time. Okay, yeah, yeah. But me, I'm replying back to messages. No I'm, way. Like, I'm my doing boys that. say to me, yeah, yeah. Mikey, you're the only person we phone. Yeah. No matter what the time is, you answer. And yeah. as much as it, it's, it's good, I'm there. I'm yeah. Like, why am I there for everyone? What am I? What am I fucking? Am I Brother, you need to get focused. I yeah. promise you. Like you know, then. you know. In order, this is the thing. You know, in order to make a million quid, people think you have to do more, but you have to do less. You don't have to do more. You have to do less. In, how, but see, but if now if I'm gonna be a normal person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's gonna be saying, "What are you talking about? If you do less, how am I gonna make more money?" Yeah, but firstly, I'm not talking to them people who's a normal <laughs> person. I'm talking to someone who's a winner. See, I don't, I don't, I don't help losers. Straight up, bro. Yeah. I've done ten years in prison. I've made a lot of money from my businesses. I'm helping winners become 
win championships. That's my target audience. Yeah, you're making winners set world records. That's it. Yeah. If I'm going to get into an argument with a loser, it's like they say that if you argue with an idiot, don't do that because it'll bring you down to his level and beat you with experience. Yeah, yeah it's true. I don't do that no more. Like, I've spoken to him of family members sometime in gatherings and I'll say something and they're so backwards. I'm like, when am I leaving this I place? This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, but it applies to everything in life. That is really, really what you let in, who you shake your hand with, who you answer the call, who you follow on social media. It matters, bro. Who do you speak to? Like, it's so many things. Someone could, me and you could have just went to the shop. Someone could have said something to us. It could have messed up our whole day. Yeah, that's true, it's true. But if you're aware of that, you're then you'll be then so focused in what you're doing, you'll be so calculated in everything, everyone you let in and everyone you don't. Yeah, no, like we just went shop. Yeah, we went shop because we ran out of batteries. And if you think about it now, we just look back at that. We were so focused on a conversation we was having. Yeah. I don't even remember who was in that shop. <laughs> Not truthfully, because we were so focused on. Yeah. We was we've been discussing stuff. Yeah. And we were both so focused on. All right, cool. Let's do this. How are we gonna do this? Oh, your friend this, your friend that, this that, this that. I don't remember who's in the shop. Whereas normally we walk in the shop, you look around, see if there's any girls there. See if there's, <laughs> it's the truth though. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I mean. That is how we work. And you're right in that sense. You do need to focus. Bro, focus. I think that comes down to everything. And me, I'm the most focused, unfocused man you'll ever meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm focused at points, really focused, but I let my focus go. And the other day, what I done as my own clear out, yeah. I went through my Instagram yeah. and I unfollowed so many people. The first thing I do in the morning is go on my Instagram, mm. scrolling. This person's depressed with this life. I, I, I can't. I, you know, depressed people. I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your energy away from me. Yeah. If you're having a bad day, not in a rude way, yeah. Yeah. If if you you need help, get help. Yeah. But I don't need that energy in my life. If you're Therefore. having a bad day or you're got stress or anything like that, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Instagram, you're meant to post your happy days, and I, I like it for that. Brag about the good days. That's good. Yeah. But when people are, oh, I'm so depressed today. Oh, I've had a bad day. Oh, I've this. It just, when you wake up, and I wake up every morning and say, I'm going to have a good day today. Mm. That energy comes out. When you wake up and say, oh, I'm so fucking, I've got rent to pay tomorrow, I've got this to pay. Straight away having a bad day. Yep, 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 yep. And I think that is, that helps me. That's my natural, me trying to better myself there, but I, I can't focus. Yeah, look, look, this is, you have to understand the importance of focus though. So, so if, if I said to you, Mikey, that look, if you just focus for the next six months, you'll 10x your business. Would you then focus? Maybe you will. Yeah. Maybe you won't. I don't know. But it comes down to how much you really want it. And that goes for everybody out there. People don't want to change. People don't hate their current situation. You've got to hate it, bro. You've got to hate your current situation. Like, I'm not doing this. <coughs> and when you get into that mindset, I like, promise you things will start changing. Like, t I know, like, you know when people are, oh, yeah, I'll do it one day. Yeah, oh, I'll start next week. I oh, you're never going to do it. You have to hate your situation. And that's what I done. I hated it. And that's why I got to my next level and next level. And look, I'm still growing, you know, and, you know, I've got I've got big plans. But, you know, it's focus, attention, understanding financial literacy, understanding, like, what you're worth. You have to know what you're worth. Most of, see, most, you got, is it AP? Yeah. Why did you buy that? I didn't. It was actually a present, to be fair. Okay. You. Well, why have you got it on? The reason, probably the main reason, because you think you're worth, you know, it's worth it. Do you yeah? want me to be honest with you? Yeah. I'll be dead honest with you. Yeah. I haven't worn this watch in about a month now. Okay. I only wear this watches when I'm doing a podcast that I think is going to do really well. This is me telling the truth. So really? Don't, okay. Don't get gassed yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, whenever I do a podcast, that I am well, gas, bro. <laughs> a lot of people talk about my watch. Yeah. Because of the blue tick. That's why I got this strap. Okay, okay. Match the blue tick show. Got it, okay. And a lot of people compliment the watch. Mm. And in my head, it's a way to get an extra view. People yeah. say, oh, yeah, the watch. Straight away, right. they see my watch on it. Yeah. It brings, like, even when I'm out, people see my watch and they go, oh, blue tick show. Yeah, they yeah, 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 yeah. They don't care about me. They look at the oh, blue tick show. Yeah. But I don't like wearing it. That's the truth. It brings the wrong kind of attention as well. Got it. For you know, for most people, though, what it is, we put value on the external things so much. That where the real value really is, it's not what you have, it's the person you are. Yeah, I agree with that. Right? So really, where does that come from? Personal development. You have to go to the gym. You have to be around the right people. You have to You have to put so self-inflict, you know, put yourself, like in the morning when I said I wake up, bro, I intentionally put myself under stress by going to the gym. I, I have a car. I saw you was in the gym this morning. I was, that's why I text you. I swear to you, that's why I text I you. I know you like, did. We still look at our seats in the gym at like, it said, when I checked it, it said two hours. Bro, ago. I woke up at 3.45 today. What, to pray Fajr? I, I, I prayed my Fajr. Yeah. Then after that, I went to the gym. What I time don't, did you go to the gym? 
in the morning, I, stri- I po- didn't post till about 6 a.m., yeah. but I was in the gym two hours before that. Raw, you're in the gym early. Because I knew I was coming London today or wherever this is, Hertfordshire, and I thought, right, well, I need to plan my routine right. That means I reverse four hours backwards. So I get yeah. up at 3.45, do my fudger. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to then uh, do my book. I'm going to be at the gym for 5 a.m. I'm going to be out for 6.30 this is one thing I do every day. I, I've got cars. I've, I've got drivers if I need drivers. But I intentionally walk back from the from the gym. It takes 25 minutes, but I walk back on purpose because it grounds me. It, this is something I do, mm-hmm. right? Because we're so used to jumping the car, this and that. I walk back because even though I can, I don't choose. Even today, this morning, I was walking back at 6.15 a.m. I thought, I'm not missing that, right? Then I come back, do my thing. I set off at 7 in the morning, Right, yeah, fuck me. I didn't Four post my stories till later, me. but I knew when you text me, like, for this guy's probably thinking that is he I set up that. yet? I, I, when I, <laughs> I saw had, that, yeah, I, I had, yeah. myself, oh shit, he's gonna be late. I yeah, no, to no, 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 I'm not, like, I'm a, I'm a professional, bro. Yeah, no, you was early to be fair. Right, and I was on time, and and it's really important that you know the first impressions do count. So you have to know how you're showing up. I, res- I hear that. I respect it as well. Well, look, Ibby, you went from. Prison, 10 years. Mm. Yeah, let's give people a t- uh, like a timeline to work with. Prison, 10 years. Opened a successful restaurant. Yeah, sold it then as well. What do you what'd you sell it for? Multiple sevens. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Between, between one and two. Okay. How did you turn, what did you turn that, let's say two million for arguments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How have you turned that into a multi, multi-million pound business that you're yeah. turning over millions of pounds a year? Yeah, because, uh, you know, there's, 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 what business model do you really want to have is, is my question, right? And I decided that I want to work with the highest and the most premium sort of clients, right? Mm-hmm. So I created something called um, a high premium offer, which is a high value ticket offer. And I thought, if I'm going to bring my best to something, I'm not going to charge £100, £200, £1,000, £2,000. I'm going to charge 20 grand for my first program, right? And I, would even, I was even debating that, thinking, well, I'll cheap. even charge 30 grand or whatever. But I thought, like, let's start with 20K. That's a nice round figure. And I thought, I don't care if I don't get a client for the first year. This is what my mindset going into this. I do not care because I know what I'm worth. I know what I'm going to bring to the table. And I actually broke that down and thought, 20,000, that's like, what, 2,000 a month? That's cheap. If they're getting, jumping on a call with me, they're doing... I did really, like, the teach things I'm teaching them is what I've learned from a 55 grand program. So I'm giving them game, right? And I thought, okay, I can bring a lot of value. I can 10x their business. I can 10x their mindset. Just go back, like... I'll tell you why a lot of coach, uh, a lot of courses fail is because what they do is they help people realize what they can't do. For me, everything is about being. Be, do, have, right? Be, do, have means that if you don't change your identity, you can't do what you need to do, right? So in my programs, I have this fitness mindset stuff because I'm and, and I'm leading by example. Every morning I'm in the gym, I'm doing what I love. So I'm teaching people, if you want to 10x your business, sort your mind out. Yeah. Get in that gym in the morning or sort your stuff, put yourself under adversity. Show, then you'll show up as a better leader. So that's where my focus is. Personal development will 10x your business, bro. I, I put it up every day. Like the person doing is the gateway to success. People don't get that. They think, oh, no. Do you know what people say to me? Is some of the common questions. How me going to the gym, lifting weights, is going to make me money? I go, dickhead. <laughs> That's not going to make you the money. It's the process that you go through, which is discipline. So much that you have to inflict on yourself is what's going to make you the money. Yeah. Doing the things you don't want to do. Yeah. So people don't get that. But that's my core thing. Then I create the 20 grand program. Then I thought, wait a minute, I've got such a good network. I've spent like 30, 40, 50 grand on funnels, on brands, on website, on marketing. I know the best in the game right now for me, Mark. You know what? I'll go and create a 150 grand program. So now I have a 150 grand program, which is not, your company has to be doing at least a million quid, but it's for you if you want to like do, like take your business to the next level. Like I have that as well. And the more offers you have, like you have to decide what you want to do. So this was my thing. I don't want a hundred pound program. Yeah, you want the big, big, big. You want the proper people who are coming in. To yeah, who are coming, who I can really help. You want a man, not a little boy, saying, "Oh, how do I do this?" You I'll want tell it- you. Yeah, I'll tell you another thing though. You know, if for example, um, you choose to go down that route, what I did, which is like dealing with high, pr- you can't bullshit them people. Yeah. Right. And so what I've what I've done here is I put more pressure on myself. I thought, well, I need to constantly be learning new material because if you was my 
client, for example, and I come with the same shit day after day, week after week, year after year. We were like, well, I've heard that before, EB. What new stuff have you got? I'm paying you 20 grand a year. I'm pay so I put myself under pressure here by constantly learning. Bro, I study like three, four hours a day, psychology, marketing. Serious. I do this, bro. Like I'm so passionate about because I'm not bringing old boring stuff to the table. Like when I'm sitting down with you, you're, that's the whole point of meeting people. Yeah, like I, I learn something from you, you learn something from me. Yeah. We, I, my job is to make you a little bit better today. Your job is to make me a little bit better today. That's the whole purpose of meeting people and doing. They say, listen, your network is your net worth. Yeah. And that's why I try and speak to everyone I can. Yeah. Every single person I meet. And this podcast has helped me in, in so many ways because... For example, I've met you today. Yeah. We've had a chat. Yeah. I'm going to look, even if I learn one thing from you today. Yeah. It's one thing I've learned. Yeah. I'm not going to complain about it. It's one extra thing that I've learned from having a conversation with you today. Yeah. And I think what you say as well is like, you're constantly bettering yourself. You have to. Like even me, sometimes I go on Google. Like when I first started podcasting, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I went on YouTube and I was like, how to talk to people. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I had an acting coach. I swear to you, I had no idea yeah. how to make the conversation flow. Yep. And sometimes you get awkward guests. Yeah. You know what you're doing. I yep. can talk to you. It's what you do for a living. Sometimes you get a guest. You're like, so what's going on? How, how, talk, talk to me. They're like, hi. And you're like, oh. <laughs> Fuck, this is going to be a long one. This is going to be a long one. I've had that but before as well. Got to, like, you've got to drag it out of them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I'm talking to one girl. So what do you do for a living? And she's just like, uh, let's say she does, I don't know. Go, go, let's say drives a car. She yeah, yeah. Drive a car. How did you get here today? I woke up and drove here. <laughs> okay. Um, but then you have to actually, that's where it becomes hard for me. But it I does. enjoy them. Podcasts. I've had that before as well. <laughs> it's the worst ones ever. But then I leave and I'm like, the other day I done one with one guy, yeah? It was the hardest podcast. But then I left and I thought, you know what? You've come so far, Mikey, because when you first started a year yeah, ago, yeah, 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 yeah. I would have crumbled. I would have just thought, fuck. What's next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now I've patented it. Sorted that podcast out. I left. I was like, sweet. I've done my job. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I'm constantly bettering myself. You are, bro. You are. I never used to watch podcasts. Yeah. I don't like podcasts. I watch them simply to watch how the interviewer talks to the guest. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. He asked that question. All right, I'm going to do it this way. Like most people start with, talk to me about your childhood. Yeah. I'm fed up with that. I've stopped now, doing that. Talk to me about now. What's happening now? And then go uh, backwards. Now let's go backwards. Yeah, it's if better. it's time, yeah. Because people want to know what you're doing, how to make money, yeah. what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I grew up here, grew up there. No one cares. Said, yeah, Fuck yeah. that. You went prison, talk to me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a bit yeah. more straight to the point. Yep, 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 yep. But I think your your line of business is different. Yep. You're not talking to people like that. You're no. talking to already established millionaires. I'm I'm speaking to already people who are stuck at 100, 200, 300 and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to scale it. They're not good on social media. And I'm teaching them certain skills, what they can apply. And just thinking big, bro. I'm helping you think big. I'm helping you show you what you're really worth. That's what I'm doing with people. Most of it is that. Most people have limiting beliefs, Mikey. Yeah, that's no, true. I hear that. And, and, and what I have to do is sit down with them and tell them what they're really worth and what their potential is and where they want to go. But it's not easy because you have, to, you have to lead by example. So you have to become a good source of what you're teaching. So if you're going to talk about becoming a good leader, well, and are you a good leader? Yeah, it makes a difference. And if you're not, then work on that till you're ready to fully come out. This is why when you said talking about podcasts from people come on, because people are really scared of what people think. Yeah. I don't care what people think. Some people are gonna like me, some people are not. That's we understand that. That's that's the way that's the game. Well, if you accept that, then you have nothing to hide. If you show up as your authentic self, like I'm only speaking to the people that understand what I'm saying. If you don't understand what I'm saying, maybe you have some work to do. So you listen, you're an established millionaire. Yeah? We say that? You yeah, 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 well. yeah, of course. So you can give the viewers some free advice. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. I, I know you charge 20 grand. Yeah. But now let's say you've got a 18-year-old kid. I know you're actually not your ideal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your ideal client base, but yeah. you've got to help everyone. Got it. You've got an 18-year-old kid who's got an online business, or not even not, he's got a big dream, wants to do well for himself, wants to come out of the council estate, make millions of pounds for his family. What advice would you give that person who's sat at home, because I think the biggest problem nowadays, people don't know what to do. Yeah. There's so many ways to make money, but no one knows what job to do. Everyone yeah, yeah. just knows, I want to be a millionaire, I want to drive a Lambo. That's it. Mm. If you ask any kid, what do you want to do? I want a Lambo. I want a Lambo. 
how the fuck are you going to get a Lambo? Yeah. What advice would you give them, people? Okay, so the first thing I would say is that follow the principle. This is a high-level principle, which is be, do, have, right? So you're, you are at the stage 18 where you're probably lost. You don't even know what to do at this stage. But just understand that if you want to make millions, you have to have a skill, right? And at 18, what skills are they really going to have? Probably nothing. So they need to sit down and really work out what they want to do in life. And most likely, they're not going to know what they want to do in life. And at 18, they may, may make a wrong decision. At 21, they may change their mind. 25, they might change their mind again. And that's fine. Like, up until 25, even up until 30, if you don't know what you want to do, just try different, different, different things till something really, like, fits what you're doing. Yeah. And I think, I like this. And even if you fucked up five times before that, well, that's experience. You've not fucked up. You've just learned a lot of lessons along the way. And then when you get to 25, 26, then you think, well, I really, I'm passionate about this. I really want to do this. Then pursue it. Then work on one thing that you've patterned, one thing that you really want to do. Go hard in on it. Become the best at it. Whether that's podcasting, for example, like who's the best podcast? Who's the biggest podcast in the UK? Blue Tick Show. Right, Blue Tick Show. <laughs> and it'd be Aslam Uncensored. And, but you get my point. Let's look at the biggest podcast in the world. Yeah. And think, right, well, what are they doing? Oh, but they're just human beings like me. Okay, well, if I look at their model and think, if I can do it 10 times better than that, go in like that with that approach and become the best at what you want to do, I promise you, money is not hard to make. You really have to become first. Then you have to do, and then once you've been, you've once you've become, and once you've done what you have to do, then after that, skills, and once you've got the skills, bro, money comes in. It's not hard to make money. I promise you, it's not. You just have to. The hardest part for people is becoming. Listen, you lot heard that. You That's heard it. it. From, from the, listen, he's he's a successful multimillionaire. He turned his. I'm life telling around. you, bro. Like it's not. You have to become the source of what you want to teach. You have to look at yourself in the mirror at night. Am I happy with myself? Like, take your top off. Look at yourself in the mirror and think, am I happy with myself right now? Or have I got demons? Or so, what's my dark side what people don't know about? Rem you have to remove that shit, bro. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And once you've removed that stuff, I promise you, it, things come in abundance, bro. No, that makes sense. I do. Listen, and one thing I want to ask you now is, you're in a position where your life, where you're 35, you said, you're smashing it. Yeah. What is next? Bro, for me, next is like, I'm going to continue growing this, w w my coaching programs. And for me, like, I'm just going to create more offers for people, like who more I can help. Then for me, is doing events throughout the UK, throughout Europe, maybe Dubai. Do collaborations with people. If you're, you know, people like you, we're in the net, we're in the same kind of media yeah, yeah. space, right? And it's all about collaborations for me doing big, you know, everyone makes money. Like, if you want to make the real money, collaborations, then see who I want to pick to do collaborations with. Again, like, I'm in a position where I can I can design my own life now. That's where you have to go. Yeah, like you got, where you, you got you, financial freedom. Yeah, you can create now something. You can do whatever you want. You can go and meet where you want. You can meet people in different countries. You're not some yeah. people. It's I need to go and do a podcast with that guy, but I can't afford it. I can't fly to Dubai and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that whenever. you I, want. I I could do that if I if I really wanted to like sit down with someone. If, if I had the right connections, I could do that. It's about collaboration and just going bigger, bro, and then creating bigger impact because, look. Like, your heart follows the pocketbook. If you've paid 20 grand for something, I'm telling you, you're going to show up. Yeah, definitely. Right? If you don't, if you've got a wife, that she's going to make sure you show up. <laughs> for real, that's right? 20 grand. She's making sure you she's show up. She's making sure you're showing up to that event or that study time. If you pay 200 pound, yeah. or if someone does a free event, you don't even care. No, it's true. It's true. So you have to really decide like what sort of a business model you want and then just you know go with that. For me, like I want to create bigger impact. If I can create more leaders and more people who can do exactly what I do and they will have more impact, that will make me happy. Well, I think the only way to the only way to do it is over the next five years, I'm guessing. Is that what you want to do? I don't, I don't look at it like that, but for me, it's just constant growth year after year after year. Like this year, I'm focusing on my business coaching. Then maybe next year, I'm going to do events throughout the UK. And I know I, as soon as I do that, then I'll go into Europe. Then I might do like inner circle, private exclusive events. And what that means is like, have like 10 people. We go on, we go Bali. We go yeah. South America, like Costa Rica. Everyone in that program is doing a million quid. You teach each other game. It's networking as well. It's networking, it's networking, that sort of thing. And you're in a group of people who all are winners. All are winners, Whereas bro. Some people, I think some people's biggest mistake is they got friends around them who they ain't got the hunger, they ain't got the drive. It's, oh, bro, do you want to do this? Oh, yeah. 
uh, uh, can't be asked. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't do this. So it's, it's too expensive. Let's do it. You want people? I'm gonna phone you up. Ibi, look, I got this idea. Mikey, go smash it. Yeah, I'm phoning up friends. Your bro, got, oh Mikey, you know, I don't think it's gonna work. You bro, you can't have that. You have to cut them people out straight away. Yeah, not for real. Do you know what I mean? Like, nah, man, that's not happening. Like, I can't, like, I don't ring anybody. Like, sometimes your biggest fan is you. Yeah, no, I, I, that's what I say. I you say, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, speak to yourself. Like, be like, you know what? I've got this. Of course I am. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you had a little, if you saw, see, this is the thing. We don't chat to ourselves as well. A lot of people don't because we've got phones, we've got distractions. And I think for me, that came from prison because I had no choice but to think to myself yeah. in a dark room, like with my deep, deep thoughts and cognition. I think I'm, familiar with that routine so whenever something happens i talk to myself bro i'll close the room I, i've got this mad routine sometimes what i'll do is i'll go somewhere random i'll book a hotel for two days yeah right i'll cut my phone very silent and i'll just stay there for like two days map out my shit and be like right i've got back focused now I'm, I'm i'm coming back into manchester now i'm ready and focused like i do stuff like that weird stuff like that that makes a difference that's what works for you what it works, works for you, me it might not work for me yeah it might not yeah that's what i say to everyone as well. what works for you might not work for me yeah but you've obviously got a recipe yeah your recipe is clearly working because you're making millionaire 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 yep look i think if anyone has tried your course yeah let me know i want to meet them i want to talk to them see yep. what it's about yeah i think that's what it my is. testimonials all on my website yeah your yep. testimonials is what matter yep Listen, I think it's a pleasure having you on the show. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to discuss? Um, no, you know you know what? Just a final message, bro. What I'll really say to people is that, you know, if you let someone feed you, right, you are also giving them per the permission to starve you, right? And what that really means is to break that down, like take control of your own life, right? Stop being, stop doing things what others want you to do. Create a freedom pattern for yourself, like, get connected to your re your real purpose what it is and i know it takes time but it ta it comes from being like change your identity if you don't like what you if you don't like the output change the input and i promise you everything will change for you no i like that quote i like that quote a lot if you give someone opportunity to feed you give them opportunity to yeah start. if you if you let someone if you give someone the opportunity to feed yeah, you it's true man you don't think you're about allowing that. them to like starve you as well yeah, no, that's, that's, that, that, that's hit from, that's a good one. I like that. I like that a lot. Listen, pleasure having you on. My brother. Once I've turned this into a, if once I've 10 x this, yeah. be in touch. Keep impacting <laughs> people, bro. You Look, seriously, you're doing great things. Like, yeah. you, maybe you might not give yourself enough credit, but you, you, you're giving people a platform to speak. And I know you've got, like, a really, really good ahead, everything ahead, whatever you're doing. You've got a good, you're smart mind on you. You just need, like, you just need to get to it, right? And just no, do it. Focus. 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 Listen, thank you again. Love my bro. I'll see you on part two when I'm 10x it. Yeah. And I'll see you soon. Thank you for coming no, on the show. No problem. No problem.